Then Jesus breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. So what he's doing now, he's reflecting what God did in creation. When Adam was dead and God breathed the breath of life, the Spirit of God into him and he became alive. Jesus is doing the same now. And when he's breathing the, the Spirit of God onto the disciples, guess what? They become spiritually alive. They become a temple of the Holy Spirit. Sin is now removed because he paid the price on the cross. And they can now be called sons and daughters of God. They can go and and live with his presence on the inside and the bible says that the holy spirit is a seal it's a mark inside of you that will open heaven for you one day you belong to god because god's spirit lives in you so the holy spirit within prepares you for heaven you belong there your name is written in the book of life and you say yeah that's that's cool Daniel, but i'm still on earth yes you are because you're here for the purpose to make a difference for God. And He is still your helper. So let's look at the last point today. Number three. His power upon you. Now the text we're about to read is, is 40 days after Jesus met with the disciples for the first time. And He breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus is spending 40 days with them. And this is the very last thing that He's saying to them before He is now taken back up to heaven. So this is what Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8. But you will receive what? Power. Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my Witness. witnesses. Telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So 40 days after he breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now he's been talking with them. You can read in Luke. You can read in Matthew. You can read in the book of Acts. He's saying, now wait here until you receive the Holy Spirit. And you might think like, listen, this is a little bit confusing. Did the Bible get it wrong? Did they receive the Holy Spirit then or later? Jesus, did you forget that you already told them that you received the Holy Spirit now again? No, no, no. He's not confused. But he's talking about two different experiences here. The first experience is salvation. The Holy Spirit on the inside. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're ready for heaven. But now he's talking about a second experience. And he's saying now the Holy Spirit will come upon, upon you. Not just on the inside. But the Bible talks about this as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Be immersed of the Holy Spirit. Totally covered with the power of the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit on the inside was God's plan from the beginning. What about the Holy Spirit upon? Was that also part of God's plan? Yes sir, I'm glad you're asking. Look here. In Psalm chapter 8. When the psalmist is showing us the poetic view of creation. He says this. Yet you God. You made them, he's talking about humanity, you made them only a little lower than God. That means that, that humanity, we are the crown of creation. We're the most important part, the most valuable part of creation. You made a little lower than God and, and you did what? You crowned. You put a crown upon them. And now the translation said, you clothe them with glory and honor. With doxa, with kabod, with the weight of God, with the presence of God, with the spirit of God, the power of God. You gave them in charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. In other words, he's saying, now I'm calling you to make a difference. I'm calling you to do this difference. So, so from the beginning, God's plan was the Holy Spirit on the inside, but also to be crowned, to be clothed with his power, with his, with his weight, with his presence on the outside. It's been God's plan from the beginning. So if the Holy Spirit on the inside prepares you for heaven, the Holy Spirit upon you prepares you to make a difference here on earth today. And we need that power, I'm telling you. Jesus said, receive my power to be a witness. Not just to enjoy it for your own sake, but to make that difference for me. Be a witness with, for that, that you serve a supernatural God. Because we cannot create the supernatural in our own power. Be a witness of, of the way you live. Because I know without God's life, I cannot control my thoughts, my tongue, nothing. And I would be a bad witness. But with His power, I can be a good witness. Receive His power to read and understand the Word of God. Receive His power to pray. Receive His power to share the good news. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The power of God upon us. Sometimes when you start talking about this, uh, and I met this person in my life, some believers will be a little bit frustrated, a little bit angry even. And, and then 
They, they told me in the past that Daniel, if uh, you talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, do you think you're better than me just because you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? No, sir. Not at all. I do not. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God in my life will not make me better than you. The power of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit will make me better than me. I know. And I'm the first to tell in this room. Without his power, I would fail in everything I'm doing. Without his power upon my life, I could not live one day for him and, and honor him with my life. But with his power, with his clothes, with his crown, with his presence, with his help, nothing is impossible. Listen, Christmas Eve is coming up tomorrow and Tuesday. I have a suggestion. I have a, an encouragement. I have something to ask. Why don't we all, everyone in this room, everyone in Colleen, why don't we all ask God today for that power on our lives? Power to make a difference. Power to be a witness. And say, God, I want that. And then when we leave, we grab the last invite cards we have. And we pray over them. And we start handing them out where we live, to our loved ones, to our neighbors, to strangers. And believe that God will move. And that we pack both campuses for Christmas Eve services. There's no better time to reach the lost than Christmas Eve, I'm telling you. Or you might say about Daniel, I don't have that power. And I, I don't even know if I'm ready to receive it, if I'm good enough to have it. Yes, you are. 